Now, as if the Russian economy weren't in enough trouble, with warnings emanating from the President's office that this year's budget deficit will reach 8% of GDP, now it seems the government is faced with the task of reining in banks, which were happy to take its money, but aren't happy about doing what they're told with it. Commerzant is reporting that Russian prosecutors have warned 70 banks against misusing bailout funds provided to stimulate lending. It says that they've told the banks not to undermine the ruble by buying foreign currency with the money. Well, I'm joined in the studio by Alexander Murchev, the founder of Kroll Corporation, which helps elite clients, individuals, private entities and sovereign nations overcome substantial economic and logistical issues. So I imagine he's busy at the moment. And in our Moscow studio is our reporter, Ellen Pinchuk, who will be joining in the conversation. First, though, so, uh, Alexander Murchev. Well, what do you make about this kerfuffle <laughs> reported in Commerzant? Uh, about uh, the banks buying overseas currencies with their, their uh, hard-earned, well, not hard-earned rubles. Uh, at the end of the day, there is nothing wrong with this, I believe. And as you remember, yesterday we have another story of a type that uh, uh, certain assets are going to be bought, certain restructuring is going to be on the way. And what it says, actually, is uh, it sim simply underlines the importance of the Russian market on one hand. Yeah. And that they are looking at the financial community there, like everywhere else, is looking for appropriate solutions on one hand. And second, I believe the most important part of the story is that we have a global economic crisis and the economies worldwide are trying to resolve the issues with the local measures. So the inconsistencies are going to be with us for a long period of time. And uh, whatever is going to uh, happen there, I believe that the Russian set of measures that has been put in place are more or less adequate. Uh, comparing uh, with other economies on one hand and the uh, tools that they have in the box. Basically, right. we should judge this from that premise. All right. Let me bring Ellen in. Ellen? Hi, Dr. Murchiv. Thanks for being with us. Russian companies have some $400 billion in foreign debt coming due over the next four years. What is your estimate of how much of that is in trouble? Uh, I, I, again, I don't think that this is a Russian issue. What is going to happen, actually, is you have seen yesterday the Secretary Geithner has proposed a significant plan and a set of measures that uh, were quite impressive. At the same time, the markets didn't react quite well, as you just underlined. But they won't uh, react well to anything short of a silver bullet. And the silver bullet does not exist. And whatever has been announced, the reaction would be like that. So what is uh, we're going to see, of course, we're going to see a certain level of restructuring. We're going to see the same process going in all the developing economies. Russia is not going to be exception. At the end of the day, uh, most probably, we're going to see a focusness finally on the quality of the assets rather than on liquidity. I think that uh, liquidity is the most oversold story of this crisis rather than the real issue that is underlying the packages that we are uh, uh, that has been considered worldwide or implemented worldwide, which is the asset quality and the solvency. And uh, that's why, the, in a certain extent, the uh, Secretary Geithner's plan is more of a bypass uh, rather than a heart surgery. And it remains to be seen uh, whether it's going to work. The same for the Russian economy. Let's not forget that all the developing economies, the rapidly developing economies, are virtually under the same pressure like the West of the world. And they're looking for their own solutions. And uh, issues being the same, the uh, underlying current is uh, going really to be determined to what extent we are going to find international solution to an internationally dysfunctional system rather than to uh, reverse to our local measures, which at the final count is going to fragment the uh, world financial market on one hand, and uh, I believe the functioning of the world economy. We are about to set to see uh, a different set of the uh, local regional uh, alliances because normally the, the, the leadership of the countries, the, the, the financial uh, communities are looking for a resolution of this set of issues. Uh, on one hand, a, and even a set of protectionist measures that haven't been seen uh, since the World War II. Uh, recently, we had this gas dispute between Russia and Ukraine. It uh, affected gas deliveries to Europe. Now a deal has been signed. Do you think that's going to hold, or is Europe uh, going to have some more cold winters ahead of it? I think that for now is going to halt, but let's not forget that this is at the end of the day a commercial dispute uh, with the clear issues that are uh, the clear underlying issues. The, the the big set of problems is actually that the Europeans should really consider creating a consortium of a gas consumers or some kind of a form like this that would negotiate on a long term uh, basis the solution along the lines of uh, what you have uh, just asked, 
And secondly, most importantly, uh, really to uh, go to an arrangement that would make Russia a real stakeholder into the process. And then you would get going to have a much more uh, predictable market behavior. Uh, not to mention, of course, the issues of transparency and accountability that uh, would affect the all uh, new arrangements that should be taken in, put in place. Uh, the, the whole system has been created in the uh, early 90s. So obviously, it needs a serious overhaul before we uh, can talk about uh, a little bit more solid and stable uh, uh, supply. Right. Well, I have loads more questions to ask you. Thank you, Alan, very much indeed. I have plenty more questions, but uh, sadly, time is against us. Thank you very much indeed, though, for uh, coming in. That's Alexander Murchev, the founder uh, of uh, Kroll Corporation, which hands out uh, advice on economic and political and social logistical matters to governments and private individuals. Now, as we discussed uh, earlier in the program, it's day two of the bank bosses on the carpet as British lawmakers, MPs, grill the heads of the institutions involved in Britain's continuing financial crisis. 